Now, from New York City to the world, it's Dominic Carter. Sooner or later, sooner or later, this presidential race must leave dream world, Hollywood status, and come back down to earth, focusing on issues. Dominic Carter here with you folks, plus the migrant mess, Mayor Adams of New York City acting like he has no responsibility and starting the migrants coming here. Also, the astronomical costs to New York City. In Ferguson, Missouri, police have released the video where, as a result, an officer is fighting for his life and pro-Palestinian protesters edit again in Los Angeles. We all know traffic is a mess there like New York City, but blocking the 405 freeway protesting. But we do have to start with this. It's a story that's developing, and it's a story that is breaking as of right now. After President Biden has dropped his reelection bid, His administration has released records showing that while he was the vice president, his son solicited U.S. government assistance. Hunter Biden sought State Department help for the Ukrainian company. In other words, Hunter Biden asked the U.S. embassy in Italy to help for help that is landing Burisma, the deal while Mr. Biden, his father, was the vice president. The records, and again, this is a story that is breaking as we speak, the records which the Biden administration had withheld for years indicate that Hunter Biden wrote at least one letter to the U.S. ambassador to Italy in 2016 seeking assistance for the Ukrainian gas company Burisma, where he was a board member. And apparently, apparently, folks, embassy officials appear to have been uneasy with the request from the son of the sitting vice president on behalf of a foreign company in terms of uh, what was written by a Commerce Department official based in the U.S. Embassy in Rome who was tasked with responding, that individual said, I want to be careful about promising too much. And so Hunter Biden's lawyer, Abby Lowe, claims that uh, his client asked various people, including the U.S. ambassador to Italy at the time, of whether they could arrange an introduction between Burisma and the president of of uh, a, a region of uh, Italy where Burisma was pursuing a project. And so, as you might expect, his lawyer is stating nothing was done wrong, but this is a story that is developing. And remember, Hunter Biden was paid a million dollars a year to sit on the Burisma board. But again, this is information that is all coming out as we speak, folks. So sooner or later, sooner or later, Americans are going to be forced in the presidential race to look at issues impacting them. And that's not happening now with the DNC kicking off in Chicago next week, the Democratic National Convention. I want you folks to listen carefully to this clip you're about to hear. It's from MSNBC, and it's an African-American woman from Philadelphia expressing her frustration with the Biden-Harris administration, blaming them for the impact of inflation on her life. You're about to hear her say that the economic situation is killing us without killing us, highlighting the severe consequences, if you will, of the current economic 
policies. Listen to this. You're going to hear the woman almost break down in tears. It's an emotional testimony. And this is a clip from MSNBC. How hard has inflation hit you? It, it hit me hard. It's hitting me hard. What do you blame for it? I blame the federal government at this point. If a working class mom who works as a paralegal cannot buy a two dollar bell pepper because it's now five. Imagine a mother living on food stamps. Mm. Imagine a mother who's making minimum wage trying to feed children. Mm. They're killing us without killing us. If you, if you understand that. They're killing us without telling us they're killing us. They're hurting people in ways that they can't help themselves. It's either feed my child or, well, how about feed my children and I don't eat. But I have to go work. Folks, very compelling what the woman in Philadelphia said to MSNBC. Let's go ahead and open up the phone lines, 800 848 Nine two 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 eight hundred eight four eight nine two two two. I also do a second show daily, three to four p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the bottom line is this, folks: we have got to back the blue law enforcement. The Ferguson, Missouri Police Department has released videos showing an officer push to the sidewalk during protest marking a decade since the Michael Brown killing. And that officer is now fighting for his life, severely injured with a head injury, and police have released body camera video and footage. And you see the suspect charge at Officer Travis Brown and this was during protests near the police station in Ferguson, and it's not, it's not a pretty scene. And I want you to listen. I focused on this 3 to 4 p.m. I want you to listen to what the police chief in Ferguson, Missouri, has to say as it relates to the current protesting and this officer who is fighting for his life. My team got out there and was assaulted by a number of the protesters that were out there on the scene. As a result, one of my police officers suffered a severe brain injury. He is at an area hospital right now fighting for his life. And I'm going to break away a little bit from what I was planning to talk about. This police department, this Ferguson Police Department, since 2014, it's been a punching bag for this community. The, the police department back in 2014, we don't even have them officers here anymore. So what are you protesting? These officers not even here no more. Everything that the activist community has advocated for, as far as body-worn cameras, implicit bias training, crisis intervention training, all this stuff, we have done all of this. What are we protesting? What is it? We even changed the uniforms at this police department because people said that the old uniforms trigger people. What are we doing? Ten years later, I got an officer fighting for his life. It's enough, and I'm done with it. We're not doing it here in Ferguson. Our community is united behind us. Our community is fed up. We want to heal. Our community want to heal. We want people to peacefully protest, but we damn sure ain't going to allow you to destroy this city. and We ain't going to allow you to hurt none of these police officers. Heartbreaking to listen to that police commander in Ferguson. Ten years after Michael Brown, this nonsense is still going on. We have got to back the blue. It is in all of our interests. If we don't, it's not going to be pretty throughout the entire country. Eight hundred. Eight four eight nine two two two. So the migrant crisis, right? The mayor of New York City, Eric Adams, welcomed them here, but that's revisionist history. You know, now the mayor doesn't remember that. I'm going to come right back to the mayor. I'm thinking about last night's interview between Elon Musk and former President Donald Trump. 
First, I want you to listen to what Mr. Trump had to say about Kamala Harris. Kamala wouldn't have this conversation. She can't because she's not smart. No. <laughs> you know, she's not a smart person. She is a radical left San Francisco liberal. And now she's trying to protect. Now she's looking like she's she wants to be more Trump than Trump, if that's possible. I don't think it's possible. But she wants to be more Trump than well, Trump. She's terrible. But she's getting a free ride. And uh, you, you heard it out of uh, Trump's mouth there. She's getting a free ride. And can anyone deny that as of this point? Because it's obvious what's going on. But the mayor of New York City, so defensive over the migrant situation. And you would be too, folks, if it's costing $5 billion for shelter, security, and food. And that amount could double by next year. The mayor at his daily press briefing of New York City on Tuesday, listen to what he had to say about the migrant crisis. I don't understand why our city is going through this. And what this team is doing is managing a, uh, a crisis that's not sustainable. And that's what we're doing. And it's not always pretty and it's not always perfect. But let's keep in mind. Mr. Mayor, you welcome the migrants here to New York City. Bottom line, let's begin with your telephone calls, 800-848-9222. Mary in Connecticut, what's on your mind? Dominic, I think you're amazing. Thank you. I just wanted to, um, I just feel so bad about what's going on with Donald Trump because he is really blowing this election. He's talking about extraneous factors instead of just pounding, pounding, pounding the border, inflation, the border, inflation. And he's talking, she says she's not so smart. Don't say that because he's going to get, unfortunately, I think he's going to get slammered in this debate. And then people are going to say, oh, well, if she's not so smart, then what is he? And I am a total Trump person. Believe me, I'm just really feeling kind of down right now. That's all. So I'm looking well, for you for some internal strength. Well, well I think I, I, you know, you know what, Mary, if you could hold with, hold for me for for a little bit here, and then I can I can respond to what you brought up in just a moment. But I've got to take a break first. We will continue with your calls. I will continue with Mary in Connecticut. You can reach me at eight hundred eight four eight nine two two two. We are coming right back. This is Dominic Carter. Now, from New York City to the world, it's Dominic Carter. And we are back. Dominic Carter here with you. We were just chatting with Mary in Connecticut. Mary, are you still with us? Yeah, Dominic, I really do appreciate your time. Well, thank you, and I appreciate your time as well. So let's go through what you just said. You feel you, you support Trump, but you feel that Trump is blowing the election, correct? What I feel and I'm just concerned about is that he's not keeping himself together good enough. Like, for example, he should he has no business whatsoever going after Governor Kemp. Governor Kemp has a whole entire political machine that could help Trump win Georgia, which we need Georgia. We need Pennsylvania. We need Georgia. So he's blowing it. He should not say one negative word about Governor Kemp. I, I, I understand. Him, I understand you on that one, Mary. But, but I think I think Trump is still going to win Georgia. I I, I mean, historically, I I know that it's now a toss up, but historically, it's been Republican. I know that the uh, governor and Trump don't get along. At the end of the day, I think Trump is going to win Georgia. Your other concern was. No, my other concern was is that he's concentrating on extraneous factors like saying, oh, she's not so smart. You know, he needs to hammer border inflation, border oh. inflation. OK, well, and then he needs to and he needs to say what he's going to do because okay. suburban. But, but wait, I Mary, to but, Mark Mary, but, and I just but, feel but very Mary, down. but Mary, but but how can Trump jump out the window with all with what you want him to do? 
when she's not being asked anything. She's not responding to anything. So what he's trying to do is to flush her out because he's got to get her to come out from the shadows. Okay. Uh, and it's it's about to happen. But he's trying to flush her out. That's what's happening. Well, my concern is that I don't want him to lose it during the debate. No, no, he's not going to. He's not going to. Have you have you ever seen lashed out at one of the? Have you ever seen him lose it during the debate? Um, The the stakes are too high. He's he's not he's not going to lose it during the debate. Sounds good. Trust me, he's not going to lose it. But thank you so much for the call. Listening on iHeart Radio now from California, we have Bert. Bert, what's on your mind? First of all, I love listening to you. You are absolutely great. They should indicate, you. Uh, syndicate your show. I 100% agree we with your previous caller. We are syndicated, Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. You've been wonderful. Let me, he doesn't say how he's going to end the war in Ukraine. Doesn't talk about why Hamas wouldn't have attacked Israel if he was elected. He His message is trite, the same old and what about uh, and what about Kamala Harris's and right what now. about Kamala Harris's message? She's enthusiastic. She's no, 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 Bert, 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 Bert. What, what about her message? I didn't talk about her energy. I can get a high school cheerleader with energy. What about her message? You're dissecting Trump, but you're giving Kamala Harris a complete pass. I'm not giving her anything. She doesn't have a message. All she has is talking points, rah, 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 enthusiasm. And that's all half the people, more than half the people need. Uh, Vance is like a a wet noodle, like a a meter maid on on her last day of work. He talks very robotic. Waltz at least has some excitement. Um, like your previous caller, hey, I am Bert, very pessimistic Bert, that, that uh, Bert, Trump Bert, is going to win. Bert, I hope Bert, you're right. Bert, but, Bert, you should just say up front that you're a diehard Democrat. You, you should just be honest. No, no, you, you're totally 100% wrong. Okay, okay. I want Trump to win, but my fear is that he doesn't. he's off track. He doesn't say anything new. He says some... But you're not saying anything things. about Kamala Harris. You're giving her a complete pass. You're doing exactly what she wants you to do. She wants this race, Bert, and I appreciate your call from California. She wants this call to be, this contest to be all about Trump. And you're feeding right into her hand. Bottom line, we will continue with your calls in just a moment. I'm coming right back. Now, from New York City to the world, it's Dominic Carter. Just imagine that, folks. You're trying to get home in Los Angeles on the 405 freeway. Doesn't get any busier than that. And pro-Palestinian protesters are blocking the freeway. All I can say, folks, is this. Israel should finish off Hamas, and Israel should resist the Biden-Harris demands for concessions to be made to uh, terrorists. And it's clear that Hamas that one of their big goals is to hang on long enough for Kamala Harris to win in November. And I know I'm saying all of this as uh, Israel has rejected, not Israel, Iran has uh, rejected Western calls to refrain from an attack on Israel. So at any moment, we don't know what could happen. We don't know a full scale wall could break out, but full scale war excuse me could break out but israel must must defend herself so let's go to freddie line five flushing freddie what's on your mind how are you don long time been watching since channel one news that's how far back love well, your thank show you. Love your thank show. you thank you thank you right. what's going I, on freddie 
I have a question I haven't heard yet, so I'm going to kind of throw it at you. It's two questions, very quick ones. I feel that Trump has used his arrogance. They used his arrogance to push him out to debate Joe Biden early. I don't understand how he didn't see that coming and not play the back role and wait to after the convention. I believe that's, I love Trump, but I believe that's his arrogance and ego that made him take that debate. He, I just don't see how nobody in his camp didn't see he was being set up because Joe was an easy win. Kamala, unfortunately, the media is driving or driving her. So that's my first question. I just want to know your feelings on that. You know, honestly, Freddie, I've never looked at it that way. That's that's an interesting way. I mean, I, I do. I think we all can concede that Biden was the much easier win. But I think Kamala is an easy win as well, except for the fact that she's a black woman. And, and that becomes a game changer because all of this kumbaya throughout the country, no one's being rational. No one's thinking about what's in the best interest of America. Uh, frankly, that there's a segment that just wants to elect her to make history, and then what? So yes, I mean, I, I mean, so I, I, you, you raise a good point, Freddie, and you and know, I don't. It, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just. I didn't want to interrupt you, but I just got to add. It just seems so obvious that he, how did they miss that to to take the bait? He, if he was patient. It would be a breeze. I believe the combo thing is going to collapse as well. That was actually my second part of the question. Everybody's picking up on the teleprompter. However, the media, is, as you know, is extremely powerful. So people are buying into the Kamala thing. The question is how many and, and, and how far this can go. Um, it's so, scary. Uh, it's it's yeah. really scary that no one, or, or, or at least I should say her supporters, they're not stopping to think for rhyme or reason. They're just going with it because she's a black woman and they're Mm -hmm. making up excuses to support her when at the end of the day, they're just supporting her because she is a black woman. Freddie, you know, you raised, you raised a very good point. I want you to do me a favor and give me a call uh, uh, later towards the week so I can have a a chance i really want to answer that one but off the top of my head i don't have an answer i'd rather you wait i'd rather you wait i want i i thought you would have seen not i don't mean that any disrespect i just don't know how nobody's raising that point like i thought one person would and the last thing i would say is when he debates wait 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 wait, let let, let me just say this let me just say this biden had threatened to not debate at all so i I, I, so I, i hear you so i guess trump's thing was if he may not debate me at all, I better jump now when I got the opportunity. That Off the top of my head, that's the only thing that I can think of. But I'm going to take you up at the end of the week. Then. And I and look forward to I that, would, Freddie, because it's not, it's, ask, not, it's not often that I'm stumped. And you, and you got on this one. Go ahead. So the last never one. never stumped. I love that. Very quick question. Do you think that Trump needs to start driving home actual numbers on immigration instead of just saying it's really bad? He's not throwing numbers out. I think that's what the people would be shocked by. Do you agree? Disagree? Uh, or you think- I agree, but he's got to flush her out. That's what he's trying to do now. But she's Agreed. very disciplined. She's disciplined because, frankly, because she knows that she doesn't have the goods. So she's going to hide as long as she can. Thanks, and, and, that, and that means, thank you. And that means she's going to hide through. If you're her, why would you surface before the DNC? Again, it's a fully scripted event. You show up and give your speech. It's going to be the anointing of the female Obama. The media is going to go gaga and she's going to be on top of the world and she'll get a boost. And at that point, she will be winning the election by the end of next week. But I don't believe it's going to last. So now I'm going to go to someone and I want to say something to her. She wrote me a very nasty email uh, because she was upset with me. And that's Audrey in Brooklyn. And so, Audrey, what what I want to say to you is you have to understand, Audrey, I don't let anybody just talk forever without being challenged. And you want to just talk and you don't want me to challenge anything you're saying. And that's just not realistic. I I like you. I think you're a decent person. But when I ask you for substance, you rarely give it to me. Are you there, Audrey? Yes, I am. And okay. if I, I didn't mean for what I, I emailed. 
because I don't like social media because you. What, yeah, what but I you said, saying, but you said not, some nasty things. I won't repeat what on the air what well, you said in the email. So you say I don't listen to you, but I just want to let you know I don't like social media. So I see well what I was trying to say came across as nasty. That was no, 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 I no. I, you, I, you don't want me to repeat exactly what you said in your email okay. to me. It's okay because I just thought it was you know disrespectful because I didn't disrespect you. Okay, and Audrey, but I, Audrey, Audrey, I have to be honest with you. I have to be when I take your calls, Audrey, I get at least five or six emails where people say, I have no idea what she's talking about. What is she talking about every single time? And I take you and Audrey, wait, wait, please. And I take your calls anyway, because I feel that you have something to add to the conversation. But that doesn't mean that I'm just going to let you ramble on and you just make a, a, a statement. And that's that. That's not talk radio. There's a reason why I'm the host of the show. I understand. So and go ahead. Go ahead, please. Um, okay. And I'm not disputing, but um, give anyone my email if they want to know what I'm saying, because I'm not afraid of talking. But what I was just was You said that this was a loser show. And 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 all us were losers. No, Audrey, you don't want me to reread the email I'm on the air. What I said, Dominic. You I, said your loser show. And then you went on with some other stuff. Okay. Okay. Well, now I understand. I understand you are upset, but even the people, the the ones that don't like me, don't use language like that. Okay, but uh, all right. So I just don't want to be lying to myself. And if I offended anyone, I wasn't talking about your show because I'm still listening, even though I can't call. But what I was asking that day is why not? Why Trump won't come out with the policies, which the, the earlier um, 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 callers had just asked me today. That's all I was asking because he has a good platform and I've registered independent young people. They're neither Democrat or Republican and I'm doing it for them because they don't call in. Oh, you know, okay, okay. so time. now Audrey, but, what, but, why, uh, but why are you not asking that same question of Kamala Harris? Because have you been listening? I, she, I listen to some of her issues and once again, I haven't decided myself yet because this is some election that will go down in history. I, I did through the 60s, so I know what it's all about. You get a voting um, um, privilege, but it's just that it's so much bickering, and it's hard to, to figure out who's going to do what until okay, you know, somebody okay. has to start. And I okay, hope but, okay, but Audrey, Audrey, I, I heard what you just said, but you're calling me up asking me for Trump to detail, but you're not saying anything about Kamala Harris detailing. At least Trump is out there with all of his policies. What is she out there with? A dollar in the dream? Uh, a woman's health care um, issue. She's been talking about that, the, the abortion issue. Uh, definitely. And no, I've heard it. I'm not that's the it only up. issue that Democrats no, want to focus on, Audrey. But, that's but not going to feed the family. The border and feeding the family. Stuff she like has that. not talked about the border. Okay, it's all right. It's just, I didn't call it bigger. No, I, 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 no, I, Audrey, Audrey, I like you, but when you sent me an email like you did, I didn't get a chance to really read it until I got off the air. Music again, because I didn't mean to be offensive. It's just that I felt that because I feel because I'm a black woman, you lash out at me, and that's how I felt. Audrey, Audrey, can I be honest with you? Can I be completely honest honest with you? I cut you a break because you're a black woman. To be no, honest no. with you, because no, because you say very little of substance. Oh and, and, and no, I'm just being honest with you, Audrey. Oh. You you every caller like some people will say, well, why do you take this call all the time? Because they say something of substance because they can help drive the conversation. What I get from you and then I'm going to be quiet on this. What I get from you is Trump is bad and you I laugh understand. at Trump. But but in so many words. But you yeah, don't ever say, say but you don't ever I mean. say anything but, about Kamala yeah. Harris. And, and, for the, and for the and for the and for the last year, I take a hit for you on social media with people constantly asking me, why do I take your telephone calls? And my answer always is because I think she's relevant to the conversation. And then you're going to and then you're going to send me a private email being disrespectful. To me, I felt this, that you were disrespecting me. See, read it again, because I wasn't talking about you, Dominic. I respect you, and I've been listening to going on. This is going on my third year, you know, and I respect your show, and I have young people listening to you. But I don't say what I feel inside, because I don't want to sound like the regular callers. You know, I don't want to call names. I don't do that. I just want to just, 
There's other people see there's a different side to this world. That's all. And my okay. birthday's coming up soon. And well, like happy, to happy you. early you. birthday to you. And Audrey, thank you. Thank you for the call. Yeah. I welcome your call. And again, I, you know, I, I take a hit on social media because I think you're relevant to the conversation, no matter who may disagree with it. Let's go to Robert in Philadelphia. Robert, what's on your mind? Dominic, it's good to talk to you. Um, I definitely share your sentiment, although I don't even think that she is going to get as big a bump um, from the DNC as a lot of people are anticipating. And, and that happens sometimes, too, that you don't and get I the think, bump. I think it's going to flatline because I'm kind of on the ground and I'm seeing registration, and that's not changing over the last few weeks. The trends are still going Republican, especially in a state like Pennsylvania. But um, I know that she thinks that the media, she doesn't have to do interviews because the media will carry her order for her. And there's a lot of truth to that. But I don't think, A, it's going to be as influential or B, the bubble, I think, is shrinking. And she is still the face of failed policies. People ask Trump for policies. Well, he has a blueprint because he's already done it. Now, there are two issues he's going to have new problems with that he might not have the blueprint for. The first is all the illegal immigration and his impulse is mass deportations. Now, I don't know if that's a panacea, but at least he said something on where you know where he stands on it. As far as the inflation, there's not a whole lot he can do except for restrain government spending until the, gut, the, the economy catches up to the money supply. And that'll take about two or three years because it's four trillion dollars behind. That's what's driving the inflation. But she's the face of all these policies. And if she reinforces them. She's going to continue to lose the um, support that the Democrats have been losing because of it. And if she repudiates them, she's going to have even more problems besides the um, Hamas contingent on the left as far as shedding votes. So they're walking a tightrope that they built. They painted themselves into this corner. And I don't think the media is going to be able to help them out with this as much as people think they are. What do you think about that? Well, so Robert, let's let's play a little game. I'm I'm your consultant and you're the Democratic nominee. Right. Are, and and I'm short on time, but what are we saying to each other privately? Uh we're saying that I don't want to lose my supporters by repudiating what we've been doing for the last four years, but how do I reach new voters that we're losing because of the policies? What and, the but, 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 tells but what me. but what we're also saying is the media is on our side. Right. Let's 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 run out the clock. Let's well, let's ride been, this as long as we can, because well, because the, because Miss Mr. Mr. Right. Nominee, the moment you get out there and people see that that you lack substance, we're going to have a problem. And so right. so we're going to ride it as long as we can. Right. But understand that the media has been on their side while they've been losing support for the past year and year and a half. That's why I think that bubble is starting to shrink. I mean, they've been lying to people for eight, 10 years now. And I think the number of people that had seen that, I mean, this isn't my heart properly. We know they've been lying to us right. about the COVID, about the Hunter Biden laptop, about everything. Definitely and I don't know how the Hunter Biden situation. Stuff. Robert, I wish I could continue this, but but I'm very late for a break. Thank you for the call as always. We're going to take a break. I'm coming right back with more of your telephone calls. This is Dominic Carter. Now, from New York City to the world, it's Dominic Carter. And I am looking at my Twitter, at my ex, and uh, Brother Scott here says, I have no idea why you take Audrey's calls. She makes no sense at all, and I can't even understand anything she says. So I see like four or five different comments like that. I, I take her calls for the same reason why... Uh, I take everyone's calls. If I feel you have something to contribute to the conversation, I'm going to take it. I may not like what you say. I may not agree with you say, but I, what, what you say, but I am going to push you no matter, no matter who you may be. Even if I agree a thousand percent with what you're stating, I am going to push you. It is the nature of what we do in talk 
Radio. So I'm looking at my screen here, Pamela in New Jersey, and it says, I know what Trump stands for. Criticisms don't help. Pamela, w elaborate for me. Now, um, I know what Trump has stood for for 10 years. So does his opponents. And if he wants to let off some steam and talk about Kemp, I don't blame him because Kemp and Georgia put him through hell. And, uh, you know, it, it, everybody keeps saying, oh, he has to explain what he means. Oh, come on. We know what he stands for. And so does his opponents. And, um, and you're not going to change him. That's who he is. And that's, you know, Kemp has put And sometimes, sometimes he buries the hatchet and he gets along with people who have, you know, done horrible things to him. But sometimes, you know, whatever. He just can't do it. And uh, Kemp right now, Kemp, oh, Kemp was, is not really a Republican. And he put him through hell. Well, I, I hear you, but, but the goal is not Kemp right now. The goal is to get back to the White House. I understand, and I agree with you, Pamela. Sometimes people don't understand. They think that when you're a major uh, personality or running for president that you don't have feelings and that you don't want to sometimes, 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 you, you know, reason goes out the window and you're like, I'm going to tell this person about themselves. I mean, I can understand what you're saying, but, but, but the president has, uh, the former president, Mr. Trump has much bigger fish to fry right now. Thank you, Pamela. Let's go to Terry in Queens. Terry, what's on your mind? Dominic, I'm calling for the first time. Well, thank I you. I want to know, Dominic. I want to know why you, why you think Donald Trump is going to win the election. Okay, so who do you believe is going to win the election? Well, I'm talking about you. Why okay, all right. Win? Okay, I'm going to answer the, you. But but who do you think? Voters, who do you think? Terry, are going to decide. Terry, wins. no, 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 no. Who do you think is going to win, Terry? I have no idea who's going to win. But I, 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 when everybody's saying this person's going to win or that person, we the voters going to decide that. Until then, we we don't know. That's I how do know. Goes. I do know. I I bring forty years of experience to doing this. With all due respect to the vice president, she is a complete empty suit. That's in way over her head. And that's why her handlers are, are hiding her and keeping her away from the media. She can only do but so many controlled events. The DNC next week will be a completely controlled event. She's fine for that. But the closer we get to September and that debate, she's going to have to stand on her own two legs and good luck with that. It is my like strong you. belief that she's going to fall apart at that point. And we'll see. We'll see, we'll see Dominique. Fair enough, we'll Terry. See. I want you to do me a favor. Don't make, don't make this the last time that you reach out and give us a call. We really appreciate it. And, folks, I am about to come up with a new policy where for a, for a certain segment, it's only first-time uh, callers so that new people, new people can get into the rotation dominic carter here with you folks i want you to do me a favor one small favor i want you to make this day coming up a wonderful day in your life enjoy it folks